Hey everybody, so you've seen me review the Okimo 1000 watt power station. Today, we're taking a look at this beast over here. This is the Okimo 2000 watt power station. Alright everybody, welcome back. So this is the Okimo 2000 watt station. We're going to put this thing through its paces today. I'm going to run a bunch of different stuff on it, see how well it performs. I'm not really worried about the USB and the 12-volt stuff because we know that stuff's going to power up. I'm talking about heavy-duty, high-drain appliances. We're probably going to try a coffee maker on it. We're probably going to try the air conditioner on it. We're going to try out some things and see how well this thing holds up as well as my freezer. Right off the bat, I want to let you guys know this is not a cheap item. Inexpensive, I should say. It's not an inexpensive item. I know I hate when I watch a video and I'm used to watching them for budget gear and they go on and on and on and they're like, this is amazing and it's only $2,000. And I'm like, ah, oh, I just wasted 10 minutes because there's no way I'm going to be able to buy that. <laughs> so I'm going to let you right know right off the bat, this is $1,449.99, so $1,450, okay? It is within, it's actually very much within the range of um, most of the... Uh, power stations out there. And there are coupon codes on the site. The link I will give you, I think it saves 150 off this unit. At least for now it does. Um, that may change, so don't, don't hold me to it. Um, but that's, on, that's up to Amazon. This is really a, an incredible value at this price point. If you shop solar generators, you know they're usually about a dollar a watt, unless they're the lower end ones that are like, you know, 200 watts, 250 watts. So to get this for $1,450 when it's a 2,000 watt unit, just type in Blue Eddy into your search bar on Amazon and tell me what you come up with. You know, those are $2,000, $2,500 units. So I'm really impressed with the price point on it. Now this G2000 is a reliable, versatile, power, portable power supply. This can keep your family connected and protected at home during a power outage. You do have three of these 110 AC volts. You have three 12 volt power outlets, okay? You can pass through charge with this. This is an interesting feature on this but you can only use the 12 volt outlets and the USB and the Type-C ports. So this is all it's going to work when you're charging um, when you're charging it up. But that is very convenient to know because you can charge your big appliances over here and when they're done you can put the solar panel in in the daytime and still run a 12 volt fan or charge your phones or anything else you need to do. So that is really handy and for ham radio operators that's amazing because you can get a 12 volt plug I think they're 5.5 uh, millimeter or 5.3 millimeter barrel connectors in there. You can plug that in there, charge your run your radio while you're charging it. And I have tried it out; it does not generate any kind of RF noise. Um, the uh, pure sine wave inverter generates a little, but not anything really bad. But these absolutely silent, so that's really really cool. They are regulated as well. Now there's three options for recharging this unit. You can plug it into the wall and use your 110 volt outlet. You can do a 12 volt. Okay, here or here, up to 200 watts of power or 200 watts of solar panels, and you can charge it using a regular plug, or you can charge using a 12 volt outlet. So that's pretty cool too. You can charge it up to 200 watts using the solar panels, as I mentioned before. So something to keep in mind with lithium ion batteries, they'll last longer if you don't drain it lower than 15%. Now on this unit, I was told 15% is one bar remaining. Now this is another bone of contention for some of you folks out here. I'm going to turn it on and let you see. This is your information. You don't have all the information that other units have that say it has 34% left, it's got, it's drawing 300 watts of power, all that. You know, when you turn on these other things, they just kind of turn on. There's not a ton of information up there, but you can solve that problem with something like this. So this is a kilowatt, and I can plug this in here, and I can see how much power I'm pulling out. So if you're interested in your devices, you know, and see what they're drawing, you can do that. If not, rest assured, the battery display will give you an accurate reading. It does. I've charged it three times now, you know, running it down and charging it and testing things. And I was really impressed with the fact that it does give you a fairly accurate reading. So like we said before, the maximum output on these is 200 watts. However, if you connect the 100 watt panel, which we're going to do today, this can be charged to 90% within 12 hours. A little bit of a long time, but let's face it, you know, you're going to be switching back and forth and doing other stuff. So when you need power, it does work very, very well. It ran my freezer, when I got down to one bar, it ran my freezer for 18 hours the other day. All right, so I'm not too concerned about it. My freezer could probably go 12 hours without power on it because it's got a lot of, you know, cold in it packaged up. So something like this is definitely a handy device. This can serve as a battery backup for your 
charging, your electronic devices, home appliances, and disasters or emergencies. And with all 10 outlets here, you've got a lot of options. So let's start demoing it. First thing I'm going to try is my air conditioner. It's a 5000 BTU window unit and we're going to try it out. I am going to use the kilowatt so you can see exactly what it's draining when we try it out. Now I don't have one in a window. It's just going to sit there on the, on the top of a, a, a water barrel that I have for storage. Um, but it's still going to run. The compressor is going to turn on. It's going to show you how much power it draws. Then we're going to try out my mini fridge, my ice maker, and a few other things. And then we'll bring you back here. So let's go set up on the other side of the room and try it out. All right, so we're all set up over here. Everything's ready to go. I'm going to turn the unit on. And we're going to see what we're drawing. And I will zoom you in a little better on that, uh, on that uh, light there. We were up to 100 and something. Let's zoom you in a little. There you go. I'm showing 50, 97. Yeah, so it's pulling it in all right. And I feel the cold air coming. Let me see here. There you go, 410 watts. Now the compressor kicked in. There you go. So it's running that no problem at all, 418, 14, you know, around there watts. No problem at all with the compressor kicked in, it's definitely running. Uh, you did see it bump up really high when the compressor kicked on to about 800 something. Cool. Alright, let's try out the next high drain device. Alright, so we're off and running over there. You can see it's running the uh, ice maker. I'm going to close that uh, top there because the blue LEDs are causing it to have glare. <laughs> so there you go, and I'm seeing on the kilowatt, 224 watts right now, no problem. So that'll run easily, no problem. You can see it doesn't even it hasn't even put a dent in the battery. Um, it hasn't even knocked down one bar. It's been uh, it's been running for about five minutes now. And I'm gonna go read the uh, reading on the thing here. 238 watts. So if you need ice and a power outage. You're definitely in luck, because this thing will run that ice maker, no problem. All right, let's try a couple more things and see uh, see how we can do. All right, so now we're going to try a little bit of everything. I'm going to charge my tablet, I'm going to run this 12-volt fan, and I'm going to make myself some coffee over here. I don't often use this, uh, this little pod coffee maker, but I figured, what the heck, let's try it out. With this, you have to hold for a few seconds, and with these, you just turn on. There goes that. Fan is on. Let's turn it on low because this thing has an annoying sound to it. So there you go. And right now, let's get this on watts. There we go. Pour this in here. All right. So I guess we got some water in there. So let's try this out. Put it down here. Put that in the cup. Turn it on. And you hit the side button on this. This is a neat little coffee maker, by the way. And there you go, you got uh, 68, 67 watts. It hasn't started brewing yet. Once it starts brewing, it'll get up there. So let's give it a second, and once you start hearing it brew, I'll bring you back. So obviously, I need a flashlight. Because that meter's hard to read. That's 673 watts it's drawing. <laughs> I thought it was 67. So it is heating it up. But yeah, that's a, that's a decent amount of wattage right there. Let me zoom you in, see if you can zoom in on that a little. zoom it this way. A little bit easier. There you go. So you can see that's actually drawing almost a thousand watts just from a little tiny coffee maker. Coffee makers, hot plates, stuff like that can be very, very deceiving because they look like, you know, how much could that little tiny thing draw? And you plug it in and it blows up your 500 watt unit. So this will definitely get the job done. Let me zoom it back out again. And as you can tell, it's powering all this different stuff at the same time. Now the display will show you which ports are on. You can see it says DC out, and then it has USB 5 volt out one or two. Okay, so that's plugged in there. Plus you're drawing the coffee here, and it's about to go. I can feel it rumbling. So it's about to brew. So all in all, I'm really impressed with this. Now the next thing we're going to do is take the Okemo 100 watt panel, put it outside. It's obviously still fairly full. Maybe it'll need to charge up one bar. And I'm going to let you show you, show you how that works, and then we'll wrap up the video. But right now I'm going to let this coffee brew, and I'll get back to you, and we'll try it outside. 
All right, so this is the setup here, and one of the things I love about the Okomo solar panel is that the cable is long enough, so you're not like right underneath the solar panel and you can't get it away and get it into shade. You see I have the unit here in the shade, and that in direct sunlight. So we're going to plug it in and try it out. I'm going to bring you over to the front here so you can actually see it operating. All right, so you got your choice on this uh, Okomo panel, by the way. Um, you've got all your different connectors on the end. Of course, we're going to be using the Anderson power poles because they're just faster and they carry a bit more amperage. As you can see, we plug it in there and it'll sit for a sec and then it will start charging it. And you can see it's going up and down, up and down. And that's pretty much it. So if you're looking for a ton of diagnostic information on your screen, you're not going to get it with this, but um, for the price point and for the ability that you just saw it do, I mean, I really can't complain. This could easily run a freezer or a fridge, whatever, for a good amount of time and uh, definitely have no problem doing it. Or you can just buy this as a reliable backup around the house that can charge your devices, maybe run a 12-volt device. You guys that are RVers or campers, um, something like this is really, really awesome. Um, and for ham radio, it has its applications as well with its 12-volt outputs. You can run all of your devices off of that, so that's pretty cool too. And uh, I'm impressed with it. So let me let it charge up a little bit. We'll get it back up on the counter. And I'll give you my final thoughts on it and where you can pick one up. All right, so you've seen all it can do. It'll get you a lot of power very, very quickly. Um, one of the nice things about this is this can also be charged in your car. Um, you want to make sure you're doing that with the engine running so the alternator is charging this and not killing your battery. That takes about 18 hours on a full charge. So, I mean, if you're driving, if you're a, a van person or, you know, your RVer, you can keep something like this plugged into your uh, adapter there and let it charge up through the DC port in up here and uh, go on your way. So it's a pretty cool device all in all. When you stop, you just simply plug in your solar panels and you saw how easy that was. That thing is just so easy to operate. One of the things I like about their solar panels is they really just fold open, unzip the case, put it down, and there you go. You're ready to go. So it is very, very reliably safe as well. I didn't mention all the battery management system protections that are in it. It's got overcharge protection, over current protection, over voltage protection, short circuit protection, over discharge protection, and a temperature control. As a matter of fact, interestingly enough, when the coffee finished brewing, when I was getting ready to move that out of the way and put, put it outside for the solar uh, demo, um, it actually, the fans kicked on, and they kicked on for a few seconds, and then they kicked off. So it does definitely uh, cool itself down. It's really, really handy to operate. Very simple to operate. You know, for those of you that aren't tech geeks and want to plug a billion things in and watch every second, this is a really good unit. And it's reliable. I mean, I've used the 1,000-watt one to death so far. I've really used it a lot. So you get a 24-month quality assurance warranty. Uh, basically, you will get any kind of damage or destruction taken care of as long as it's not human damage, as long as you didn't drop it or abuse it. Uh, if the unit fails in 24 months, they will take care of you. You're going to get the power station. You're going to get the car charger, like I mentioned before. You just plug that in. And, as you can tell, I've opened this one up already, but this is your wall wart, monstrous 12-volt <laughs> charger. And um, I will tell you one thing. This gets hot during charging. Don't put this on things that will melt. Um, this obviously hasn't melted. I've charged this up a bunch of times. But it does get very, very warm. And there is a lot of power being pushed through there. So that is why. That's why you want to make sure you're putting this somewhere safe. I would get a little piece, piece of uh, tile or something to put it on while charging. Um, it's just how it works. It's nothing wrong with it. It's not any kind of defect. So I will give you the links down below for, of course, this one here. That will be the first link. Underneath that will be the 1,000 watt unit. If you're interested in that one, it's a little bit cheaper. And underneath that will be the OS100 solar panels from them. And I really got to say, you know, I've gotten rid of a lot of power stations um, since I've gotten these two. Uh, I, I am just totally convinced they work well. I really like their simplicity. They seem to just do the job, and they are a little pricey. But that's the nature of these kind of units. Once you start getting into the 1,000 and 2,000 watt units, they're going to get expensive. And $1,450 isn't a ton of money when you consider a Blue Eddy is like $2,600 or $2,700. So definitely a cool little unit. Um, I have tested them extensively, so I can tell you they work. They're not buggy. They're not weird. There's no... Uh, little weird issues with them. They just seem to work and do their job. So I'm pleased with them. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. I will have all the links for all the Okomo stuff that I've showed you down below. As well, all that will be our Amazon store. You can check out our Amazon affiliate store there, our freeze-dried wholesalers link. You guys bought a ton of that stuff last month, and we have more videos coming up. We're shocked at how much stuff you guys bought. 
And the cool thing about that link is it gives you 15% off just for clicking it. You don't have to do anything. There's no codes. There's no nothing. Click the link, save 15% on this site. Our My Patriot Supply link, which is preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com, and our Thrive Life store as well down there. You can check them out. You guys ordered a lot of that too last month. So I thank you guys very much. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.